Okay, so let's set up the whole Premiere thing. Um, in my previous tutorial, I mentioned how you got the link from Canvas under, uh, for, under the modules and assignments to get to the Honda media files on this Google Drive. What you're going to do is you're going to select all the files. I can hold Shift and then right click and then download. You can do them individually to make sure you get them all, but once you download it, um, it will go into your, probably your download folder. Now, if I group a bunch of them like this, uh, let me just do two. If I go download, it will be zipping it. So you did all, whatever, how many there are, like 14 files. It will create a zip file. A zip is just basically a little holder. And then once you, whoops. There it is. You see this little circle with the blue outlines can go around. And it may not go all the way around, but it'll take a little while. Even though the circle here is not completely all the way blue, that doesn't matter. When you see this thing that says leave site, changes you may, may not be saved. It's a strange way of saying it's done. I don't know why Google does this, but it does this. And you click, and don't be afraid, hit leave. And then notice that it says two files are zip, green check mark. Then that right here in the, my thing is downloading already. Okay, so it's downloading the zipped file. Okay, so where does that go? On my computer it goes my download folder. I open up my download folder, and when I get here, it's uh, in this case I can see down here that the downloading has finished. I have a zip. It's a drive download and it's like this little icon with a zipper on it. You double click on that, it'll extract that and it'll create a folder. And inside that folder is your downloaded movie. So I only did two for sake of time, but you'll get, you know, whatever, 14, 15 of them. Okay. So now that I know that's in this folder, I can close it and I'm going to, fact, I'm going to hide all this. And then I'm going to launch Premiere. So in my case, uh, I have the 2020 version. And if you see a similar picture to this person on this motorcycle, uh, then you have the same version as I do. Probably if you don't have this image, that doesn't mean it's wrong. You might have an older version. Um, I doubt you. Well, you might have even a newer version. Either way, it's the version you have. And as long as it's not real old, you probably should be OK. Next, we get this uh, home page, and there's a learning page which has their tutorials, which is fine. I think mine are better because it, it goes specific to what we're doing in this class. There will be a tutorial for every homework assignment. Okay, I'm going to click on New Project and make sure I name it Honda Shift underscore Proj1, and then I put my last name. In this case, the location for this, if you left it on the default, it'll be something long string like this. And the way you read this is that there is a user setting. And then you choose, in my case, the name of the computer that you named, wherever you name your computer. Mine's called iMac Home. There's going to be a documents folder. And inside that folder is an Adobe folder. Inside that is a Premiere folder. And inside that is a 14.0. Okay. If I left that alone, normally I would use my own external drive, which is much easier for me to use. And I just have my backup drive in a folder called Premiere Projects Louis. Okay, whatever it is, be consistent, know where it is, learn it, know how to read this, okay? If I hit OK, use the default, I'll show you where you can find that. Okay, so it's created it. And here again, at the top, it's a string. It's what you call a path. So I open up my computer hard drive. And I go to, right, let me close my applications. There it is. So the list up here says iMac Home. It says Users. I open up, double click on Users. And then it's the iMac Home, which is the next thing. Open that up. Go to my Documents folder. And then it says Premiere Pro inside Documents. I go down to Premiere Pro. Oh, I got to look for Adobe. I missed that one. See, here's Adobe. Double click on that. 
and then Premiere Pro, it says, and it says 14.0, and finally, there it is. Okay. It's a little bit long string. You can shorten that and put it where you want, but at least if you... Premiere will keep track of it, so that's one way to do it. I'm going to close all these up. Okay, now, if I... You start down the lower left, and it says import media to start. So how does one do that? Whenever you have a window, and there these are called windows. There's like basically one, two, three, the toolbar for five windows. Notice that when I click on it, it turns blue, which means you can only click on one place at a time. Okay. And you can't just like be staring at it. So I want it to go there. You have to click on it so the computer knows what you want. Whenever you have this, you can right click, you have a two button mouse and it'll give a, give a new pop-up menu that relates to this specific arena. If I click up here, right click, it's a longer list. Click on this one, it's a different list. I click on this one, again, it'll be nothing because there's nobody at home. Okay, so anyway, here I go to import, which is bring in stuff, and it'll say where you want to import from. Now, normally in the downloads, I had this, uh, remember this folder with the two things in it? If I double click on that, there are the two pieces, but I'm going to download everything, so I'm going to cancel that for the moment and go to where I have already brought in all my stuff, which actually is on my um, external drive. Okay, don't worry about this. This is me doing my thing. Okay, and I create a folder, which I call Honda 720. So you can rename a folder and I, inside this folder are all the clips. So if I go back one level and I click on the import the actual complete folder, that's easier than bringing all the pieces individually because it makes it nice and tidy. I like to put things in folder and name them. And then that way it brings in one big thing and inside that are all my pieces. You bring all the pieces in, it's like it just clutters up, you know, stuff. So I like to create folders. And so the other thing I want to do is create additional folders. Now I call them folders because to me it looks like a file folder with a little tab on it. And here is another one to create another one and they call it new bin. They don't call it folders, they call it a bin. Okay, so make sure that this one is deselected, which means you click on this neutral area here. I create a new folder and I'm gonna call this Honda Cuts. Okay, click down here again, deselect it. Click on new bin and I'm gonna call this Honda Music. Okay, what happens, do it again. And let's see. Okay, let's. Okay, I'm gonna. If you want to get get too many, just select and hit delete. It'll go away. If I didn't deselect it, I hit new bin. It'll create one inside the previous one. So you can't put folders inside other folders. And I'll call this Honda Graphics. Okay, but wait a minute. I don't want that inside my cuts bin. And you say. If it's closed up, that's what these little arrows are. You twirl them down, it shows the contents. I want the graphics out, so I'm going to click on it and just drag it down here in the neutral area, and I'll pop it out so it's not inside the cuts one. So this is all basic logistics of setting up a project. Okay. So now inside the Honda 720, you've got all this stuff, but there's a mix mash of stuff. Um, so the other way I'm going to do this is close that up. And I'm going to double click. When I say the icon, I mean the actual folder image as opposed to the name. If I double click here, the computer says, oh, you want to rename that? No, I don't. I want to launch it. So don't click on the name of the thing when you're double clicking because it, this, that, I mean, that is how you change the name of it. But in this case, I want to select it. So I'm going to click on the folder itself, double click on that and it pops open the list of things, which is good. The problem is I can't see anything else because as you can see right here, here's my project tab, which has all these things in it. Here's the bin that I just double clicked on and opens it. Now here's a tricky thing. If you hover your mouse over the word bin, hold your left mouse button down, drag up. Notice that this window turned blue. 
If I go to the left edge, it'll make a blue vertical bar as opposed to the top, right, or bottom. Okay, don't let go of the mouse. When I got over here hovering, don't go too far because then it goes off the chart. Hover here, let go. It will now embed this window, this bin, into my top row of windows. Now I have three windows before I only had two. Well, it's say, well, this one's too small. Now, okay, so hover in between on this vertical black bar to get this double headed arrow, hold your left mouse button down, and I will make this window equal left and right now, okay? So this is all about creating your workspace, this setting a project. Down here, it goes to the next tab. There's a bunch of tabs. This is how you know this is your project bin. So I go back to the actual master project, and there it is. Now, deselect that. So down here, Honda Valkyrie.AIF. Notice all these are .movs. Here's a PNG. These are different extensions, which means they're different types of files. The Honda Valkyrie is an audio file only. I'm going to click again on the icon, drag it down, touch the word Honda Music, let go. It will move it into that. If I touch the Honda Perf 720 PNG, which is a graphic, Click on that, drag it down, touch the word Honda Graphics. It'll put it in there. So I'm breaking down the category of things to the way I need them, which is my Honda Clips are up here. My graphics is in this one here, and the music file is down this one. I can close this up and make it all nice and tidy. So for every type of different type of element, whether it be graphics, music, archival footage, interviews, um, photographs, you should create a separate bin and there should be as many bins as there are different categories of elements and that's how you keep organized. Don't shove everything into one bin and you'd be scrolling for over like 200 elements. No, if you had 200 elements and you have five separate bins, well then you can separate them out and be easier to find that specific thing. So. You custom make your settings, your project bin with all the individual category of types of elements as their own separate bins, okay? Uh, okay, so now, one through 14 doesn't mean a thing to me. I don't know the difference. So let's take a look at what they look like. Maybe that would help. So down here in the bottom, this is what you call the, the list view, the little lines. The next one is a little square, and that's called the icon view. I click on that, and we get all these individual images now. This, to me, is a little more interesting than Honda 10, for instance, or 11, or 14. I see, I kind of see what these are. When I hover over them, I can zing through my mouse. The problem is that the default is the first frame of the clip, which sometimes is useful, like this one but sometimes not useful when it's just a blank piece of dirt somewhere. Oh, by the way, there's some more down here. Oh, well, wait a minute. Can I get these also? I don't have to scroll down. I'm almost there. There's these two. Okay, let's try something else. Let me grab this and expand to the right. I got a lot of room. And if I go far enough, it squishes down to make them four across, three across, four across. I like the four across a little bit better. Okay, because then now I can see everybody. So, but here's the other weird thing. It's Honda 1, Honda 10, Honda 11, Honda 12. Wait, 13, 14, and then goes Honda 2. Well, this is computer thinking. It looks at the first digit and puts in order based on the first digit, which in this case, all the ones. What I shouldn't name these were Honda 01, 02, 03. So it needs at least two, looks for the first two digits. So... In computer thinking, it's numerically correct. All the one leading one clips are first, and then the next ones, the leading two, leading three, leading four, and on like that. But that's not how I want it. Can I reorder this? Yes, I can. So if I go back to my list view, it is ordered. Now I can double click on the name or this little arrow and invert it. So the highest number, lowest number. Flop it again, lowest number, highest number. I can do based on all sorts of different categories, but I can do based on who, what's the shortest clip first and then the longest clip last. Well, that's a little silly too, but 
the point is you can sort this list view, there it is, list view, in the order which you want. In this case, ascending order, for instance. I'm just used to that. So when I go back to the icon view, down here is how I can change the sorting of the icons. I click on this, and since and here's all the different ways you can sort it. But the most important thing is if I go back to the list view sort, which was I had numerically from lowest number to highest number, I click on this, and now it's numerically to me correct. One starts, two, second, third, all the way till we get to 14. Okay? There we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to say, okay, these images aren't all correct. How do I get it better? So I hover underneath, I click on the image first, Honda 1, and I quickly drag this little slider and I can see the whole shot, only 34 seconds. And I think this is a more representative frame than that. So I'm going to choose this. It's, so it's a shot of the motorcycle, looks like in a warehouse somewhere. Okay, this is updating my thumbnail view. So when I see that, if I right click knows that this is still selected. I go near the bottom and it says set poster frame. I click on that and that becomes set. If I deselect it, it stay there. Now notice these, I can say, well, I like this part better, but the moment I move my mouse away from it, it goes away. So I'm baking this in. Here is this one, right click, set poster frame, Honda 3, what is going on here? Okay, kind of like an overhead shot of the headlamp, set poster frame, there. Is there an easier way than doing all this? Well, I click on it, and I mark I for this as the endpoint, and then I think it's Command P, it will stay. So I can do it on the keyboard that way. Key, uh, yeah, so here's, again, I click on it to make sure it's selected. All turns light gray. On this frame, which I have chosen out of all the possible frames, I hit the letter I to mark it as the endpoint of that thing. Then I hold Command, hit the letter P. Walk away from it, stays. Okay, same thing here. All right, go through this and change all of them. And this is one way to review everything before you start editing. All right, we'll pick this up on the other side, but go through all 14 of these and pick a frame update your thumbnail. Now, so that doesn't mean you have to use that frame to edit with, but it's just a reference to update the thumbnails. Okay, we'll stop here and pick up on the next one.